welcome to another Stage to Sofa. So today we've got a fabulous soprano, Sarah Guildford, who is a young artist at the Bavarian State Opera House in Munich. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. So how are you coping with this big transition you found yourself with? Um, I think I'm coping pretty well. Um, it, was, it was quite a big change uh, from going from having a pretty full schedule of rehearsals and coachings. Um, we're all very, very busy um, on the opera studio. And then having now nothing really, to, uh, anything scheduled for us in the opera house has been, yeah, it's been, it's been a big transition, but I think um, it's necessary and um, yeah, and it, it's nice to kind of have some time to yourself to kind of pursue um, things that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. Absolutely. So Sarah, I know you were about to do your debut role as Mignon. How are you feeling about that? Because I know you're about to go on stage and get started yeah. with it before all of this happened. Yeah, well, we had just finished blocking. We were about to um, move to the, the theatre in which we would be performing the opera. And then they cut um, the rehearsals, which was obviously a shame and very disappointing. We'd all put a lot of effort in, a lot of work in, but I hope that we will be able to do it again in the future. Fingers crossed. It's such yeah. an amazing opera. So fingers crossed for you for that. And I know they've just announced the season, I believe, haven't they? So can you tell us a little bit about what roles you've got coming up? So um, one of my first roles uh, is going to be Gianetta in Le Lesie d'Amore. And I've got about nine roles altogether in the season, I think I counted, which is double the amount of what I've had this year. So if, if the season goes ahead, I'm going to be very busy, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, and then I think later then in December, I've got Tau Mention in Hensel und Gretel. Um, I did do the Zant Mention um, this season, so I'll have done all of the mentions by the time I finished uh, my time here which is exciting. And then I finish with Bar Barberina in Le Nozze di Figaro. So I'm really looking forward to, to that one. That's a really, a really great role for me. And yeah, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it's going to happen next July. <laughs> Fingers crossed, we'll have a clearer picture then. I really hope so. So in terms of choosing roles, is that as a young artist on that program, something that you would do with a sort of connection to a teacher? Would you discuss what's right for you perhaps for the following season or do you just get given what you get? No, I think there's a lot of discussion with various people. We have, you know, singing teachers and, and coaches and, you know, you speak to directors and language coaches and, you know, it's always, I, it's always something that I do. Um, I ask what they what they think would suit me because you know at the end of the day I'm not going to be casting myself somebody else is going to be casting me so it's it's great to hear somebody else's opinion on on what roles they think that my voice and 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 my personality would um, would suit so um yeah so we discuss it we discuss it a lot and um I've been very um, fortunate in the sense that the roles that I would like to do um, are roles that I could do. So um, at the moment, I'm working on Sophie in uh, Dear Rose and Cavalier, and I'm also looking at um, Ilia in um, Idomeneo. So oh, hopefully wow. I can use this time to, to learn those two roles. Fantastic. They are brilliant roles, so I'm very, very envious of that. And I hope you're enjoying learning them. The music's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, so in terms of you going from masters straight into a very high level young artist program mm -hmm. do you have any advice for young singers on that transition between masters mm. going into a young artist program in an opera house um i think that i think the transition is actually kind of made for you already because you go when I did my masters, I felt very kind of nurtured and I felt very, um, I, I felt like um, people were guiding me in the right direction. And it's no different here, really. You get a lot of input into 
um, the kind of repertoire that you're singing, um, how you sing it. Um, I guess the, the big difference is, is that you are, I'm being paid to be there and I'm, I'm performing with other professionals. So the level of, um, the level of singing is much higher than, than when you do a master's. So I think the, the advice that I would give um, somebody is to really work on your technique because when, once you get here, you have to learn repertoire very quickly. You have to work on it. You have to be, be able to change things. If somebody wants you to change them, you've got to be comfortable on stage. You're busy. You're going to get tired. So you really need a really good vocal foundation, which means you need a good teacher and you just need to work really hard. Absolutely. Fully 100% agree with that. And I can see how that would very much set you up for the better when you start one of these programmes. So I'm just wondering, what is the biggest obstacle you face to get to the career that you're at today? Um, I think like uh, many people, many musicians that we go through times where we feel super confident and we go through times where we don't feel so confident. Um, and I had a period actually when I was at the Royal Academy I, in, our, in my last year where I actually started suffering with a bit of performance anxiety. Um, it came on without me really realizing it and suddenly I would feel so nervous that my body would be shaking while I was singing. Nobody could see it, but I just wasn't, I wasn't enjoying these performances and it got to a point where I was singing in a class and I got so anxious that I just stopped and, and broke down. I found it very difficult. I was, it was just before auditions, audition periods. So I, you know, I was very worried about not getting onto an opera school. Um, I was very worried about not getting onto an, a young artist program. And, and, you know, when you're in that bubble of a conservatoire, that also doesn't necessarily help you. So actually I, for a bit, I tried to deal with it myself and, that wasn't very helpful. So I, um, I sought the advice of one of the, the tutors at the Royal Academy, Caitlin Holker, um, who, had, who often kind of talks, talks very frankly about performing and, and artists and, and the kind of, um, the difficulties that you can go through. And she was so helpful. She gave me a lot of tips on how to deal with it. And I used them and I came out the other side. And I think actually, um, the audition that I had here was the end, the end of that period where I was really struggling with, with performing. So yeah, I felt like that was a big ob obstacle for me because I'd never experienced that before, ever. So, um, but yeah, I'm glad that I have experienced that because it's given me tools to deal with it in the future if I ever experience something like that again, which I would think that I probably would because what we do is, is a very stressful and demanding profession and sometimes has um, some, some bad effects on us, but we can always come through it, I believe. Completely. And I know there's lots of other singers such as Renee Fleming, who has also had a really bad bout of performance anxiety. So we're absolutely not alone. Uh, and I think it's very common and amazing that you're out the other side now. Well done. And you deserve the place that you so absolutely have got on the uh, opera studio course that you're currently on so well done now my other question is what moment would you go back to if you had one moment to go back to in your singing life so far what would it be and why um i think it would actually i sound like a bit like a broken record but um, i think i would go back to the day that i um got offered my place here because after going what I just talked about going through all of that um all of those difficulties um on the same day I received a an acceptance for here and also an acceptance for Guildhall School um Guildhall School of Music and Drama Opera School um so all of those worries that I'd had suddenly all kind of just melted away and I was just I was so I was so ecstatic that I I, I about ran, I ran around my living room about five times about for, for about five minutes because I was just I just couldn't I couldn't believe it and I was just so excited so I probably go back to that moment because I, I really did feel unstoppable that day. 
oh that's amazing <laughs> and that's such an important feeling to have because you know you're on the right tracks when you have that so well done in terms of your next steps now i know we're in this crazy time but there will be an end to this and so moving forward sort of five years from now where do you see yourself where do you want to be in five years time oh gosh do you know people ask that question so much don't they and i never have an answer <laughs> i've always found <laughs> i've always found that um if i plan too far in advance i always i always get it wrong i always get it wrong i if you looked at me two years ago i would never have said that i would have been here i guess my hope is to be um i think in five years time i think i would hope to be freelancing actually i think um, immediately after the opera studio I'd like to do some form of best contract um, and then after I kind of develop my stage skills develop my repertoire then to to have a, a freelance career that would be the dream I think for me and and I don't see why I, I couldn't do that in five years time absolutely liking the ambition and the fierce yeah. determination it's fabulous um, so for some of our listeners and some of our viewers, they may not know what a best contract is. Could you just explain a little bit about what that involves? Yeah. So the terminology a lot is fest or guest. So a fest contract means that you are, you work for one opera house. Um, you pretty much work for one opera house. You can do some other kind of guesting work on the side, but for most of your, your year, you're in that opera house and they assign you roles that you do in that opera house. So normally you're salaried, so you get um, a regular amount each month. So it, it, for a lot of singers, it's a lot, it's a, a more stable, um, more stable position to be in than if you're a, fr a freelance, a freelance singer. Um, so that's the main difference, really. I mean, you're still performing roles. Um, you know, people are still paid to come and see you, but you're just, you're, you're mainly just in one house. I see. Thank you for explaining that. I'm sure our viewers would be very grateful. Um, in terms of now moving forwards, you're looking for that. Are you also looking for perhaps representation or are you currently represented by an agent? No, I'm, I'm currently not represented by an agent. Um, I, I was always told that when you'll know when you need an agent, you'll know when you need that extra um support and you know that that kind of extra extra part to your career um i am looking for an agent because um obviously when i leave the opera studio i do want to go into professional work so yes but i i think it's it's definitely a process it takes a long time and you have to find the right person for you and i'm just i'm just trying to do that i'm not i i'm not um i'm, I'm not in the least desperate to find anyone i'm, I'm very much um waiting for the for the right agent agent for me absolutely i think it's very important to spend that time finding the right fit for you and the right mm. person as well as agent because they are two mm. very things that work very closely together so mm. fantastic in terms of that now in terms of advice you would give to your younger self i've got my final question now mm. what piece of advice would you give to 18 year old sarah well I think I, I, what I found is having done an undergrad also in a conservatoire, so going through um, quite a long time studying singing it in, a, in a conservatoire institution um, is that you often find yourself you often find yourself comparing yourself to other people, and I I found that that is not particularly helpful in any way so I think to my younger self I would just say this this is your own journey this is about your work and it's a long game it's not going to happen straight away and you just need to be patient and you need to trust yourself um, and you just need to become the best singer that you can possibly be and further on from that is finding a, a great teacher that you can rely on to to equip you with skills that you can use on your own and you can um, help to better your, your career. Fantastic, thank you so much, Sarah Guilford. You have been a joy to speak with today and I hope you're staying safe and well and thank you for joining me on Stage to Sofa.
Thank you, Phoebe.